What's up, boxing man? What's going on, boxing freaks? Um, summer 2013, uh, July coming to an end. We're about to enter August. And I uh, just want to recap real quick. This past weekend, um, two fights. I I'm not going to mention them all, but uh, real quick. Keith Thurman fought against uh, Chavez, an Argentinian. They had some boxing skills. Um, and basically, um, Thurman, uh, in my opinion, um, he doesn't excite me. You know what I mean? He's a sloppy fighter, lacks technique, but he's a strong fighter. And he's got a good chin. You know, um, he'll always have a chance, a puncher's chance, because he's he's strong. But um, you know, I, I think he kind of got exposed by a guy who, in my opinion, shouldn't even be ranked top ten at welterweight. And um, Thurman was lucky that this guy didn't pace himself and that this guy gassed himself out, um, because if not, that guy would have beat him. Not that he. Not that Thurman would have lost on the cards because we all fucking know how rigged Al Heyman's scorecards are. You know, we know that this guy um, who behind the scenes is a, an advisor, manager, fucking slash promoter, you know, um, has more control of Golden Boy promotion than Oscar De La Hoya. If you look at my YouTube channel, scroll down and you'll actually see a video where I tell Oscar De La Hoya to his face in New York that he's got a good company, had a good thing going, but he's got to take control back from Al Heyman. And, um... This guy Al Heyman, you know his fights. None of his fighters get get um get fights um, scored, you know, uh, against them. You know what I mean? Like even if they lose, they can't lose on the cards. You know, so um, you know, just look at the the following fight, which I was going to mention was Andre Berto versus Jesus uh, Soto Carras. And at the time that Berto got stopped, the fucking judges had that shit a draw. So that tells you right there, like if you know Berto would have got up on his feet and been all right and ended the and uh, made it to the end of the fight, who knows? He probably would have won the fucking fight. You know what I'm saying? Or at least had a draw. And we saw that shit with Berto before when he first got exposed by Louis Colazzo from Brooklyn. You know, Louis really won that fight, and Berto had a fucking point deduction for holding in that fight, and he still won a decision. You know, so that just shows you how corrupt, how corrupt boxing is. You know, and, and how anybody who's facing an Al Heyman fighter is not going to get, um, you know, a decision. Look at Malinaji Broner, you know. Um, one thing that we can all agree, whether you think that Broner won or not, all right, it was a close fight, okay. And one judge scored that shit, 117-111. That right there tells you that the fix was in. That one judge scored that fight. That fight so far apart, the, you know them two that it would if the other two judges would have scored it close, Broner would have got a split decision victory. So just bullshit like that that kills boxing. And I won't lie, the amount of corruption and bullshit that goes on in boxing has killed my passion for the sport. I mean, I used to love boxing. I was almost like obsessed with it. I mean, I studied fights. I had notes that I used to write on fighters. I used to see their weaknesses. You know, I used to go back and rewind, write, write the time, you know, at, at the time of the video where they did what they did. And, and, you know, just the amount of bullshit politics and corruption in boxing has turned me off. You know, so much so, look, the modern Aji Broner fight afterwards, Paulie, as I've spoken in his ears, he blasts Al Heyman and talks about, you know, the bullshit in boxing with the politics, right? A week later, I watched the fight on demand. Mind you, I was there live all right, at the fight. A week later, I go on demand, I go to my boy's house, and I want to watch the fight, and I want to hear the bullshit that the commentating is trying to sell the audience, right? At the end... When Paulie live blasted out Heyman, on demand, they edited that shit. So it's like, what the, you know, like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, now they're even editing videos. Anything that's not favorable to this fucking bald headed cocksucker who controls the whole fucking, almost the whole industry of boxing. You know what I'm saying? Like, his fighters get paid and they don't get robbed, right? But I don't give a fuck. I don't care how much money fighters get paid or don't get paid. I don't watch them so that they can make money. I watch them so that they can entertain me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I, I order fights. That's why I have HBO on Showtime. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes I go to fights. So see, to get entertained. I don't give a shit how much they make or not. So, meanwhile, you know, the Heyman fighters are not getting robbed, but we're getting robbed. You see, in boxing, somebody's always getting robbed. If the fighter's not getting robbed, then the fans are getting robbed. Then we're getting robbed with bullshit decisions, bullshit matchups. And some of you may object, object what I'm saying right now and say, all right, well, we're getting Matisse Garcia, right? But I can tell you, I'll tell you this much. That fight right there is an eliminator, an elimination match to see who will go on to face Floyd Mayweather. Notice that they're going to be on the undercard of Canelo Mayweather. So 
there's going to be so much hype, which there should because that's a good match. But the, all that is doing is setting up an opponent for Floyd because Floyd has, I guess, one more fight contractually guaranteed with Showtime. And then Showtime has the option of picking three more, you know, of picking up Floyd for three more fights. So Floyd needs possible future opponents. And mind you, I heard a rumor that Amir Khan fired his manager and he may be considering Al Heyman as a manager. I think the only reason why Khan would sign with Al Heyman is if Al Heyman can guarantee him a fight with Mayweather. And Al Heyman would make it happen because um, Al Heyman would get Showtime to buy a few of Amir Khan's fights, fighting bums, so that he could look sensational, so they can set up a, a Mayweather fight. But, um, but going back to my point, the only reason why Garcia Matisse is being made is, is simply so that Floyd can have an opponent. If it wasn't for that, they wouldn't fight. And, and you know, and real quick, and I'm, I'm kind of like jumping all over the place, but Victor Ortiz, I heard, signed with Al Heyman. He's, and I also heard he's going to be in the, in the Expandables with Sylvester Stallone. He was on Dancing with the Stars, and that was an indicator to me that there's going to be an Ortiz Mayweather rematch. You know, So they're trying to build this guy a little bit more mainstream. They're trying to get him a, a more of a fan base. And, um, and I see a Mayweather-Ortiz rematch further down the road. I thought that it was possible that Kodo could rematch Mayweather. But what's happened is that um, Kodo has moved back with top rank. You know, working in conjunction with Top Rank, and he's going back to HBO. So I don't know if Golden Boy pissed off Cotto. Maybe they didn't give him what he wanted. Maybe Heyman didn't do good on some promises, and Cotto said, "I don't need none of you, motherfuckers. Fuck you." You know what I'm saying? I'll go back to work with Bob. I'll go back to work with Todd. You know what I'm saying? I'll go back to HBO. They've always been good to me, and they, and he had it over there. Now I predict by making that move, Bob Arum had to make Cotto some big promises, and I think that if Manny wins his uh, next fight against Brandon Rios, and I think Cotto will rematch Pacquiao. And if Rios wins, I think Cotto fights Rios. So there's some good options for Cotto uh, at top rank, and this time he will get what he wants. So um, we'll see. But he has to first get past Delvin, which I'm hearing Delvin has made some adjustments, which could upset Cotto, but I don't think so. I think if the fight goes 12 rounds, I think they're going to give it to Cotto on the cards just because of politics, you know, just because Cotto's the bigger draw. But at any rate, um, you know, again, like I said, I'm jumping around. But going back to Berto, I think Berto now is officially a gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? I think he's... Um, I think he's a stepping stone. I, I think Keith Thurman is a hype job. You know what I'm saying? Soon enough, he's going to get exposed, in my opinion. Um, I also believe that, um, you know, that uh, that the winner of Lucas Matisse, Danny Garcia, is going to go on to face Floyd. Um, Triple G is supposed to be fighting soon or supposed to be announcing an upcoming fight. I'm excited about that. And... Um, you know, you guys, you know, give me your thoughts. Tell me if you think I'm right. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me why. You know, follow me at Twitter at YDKSAB. Give me your thoughts. You know, I'm really passionate. And, you know, and I want to say something. I said it in previous videos. You know, some, I get I get caught up in, in, the, in the heat of the moment. And I call some of these boxers bums. But I say that as a fan. But, you know, as a man. I don't consider them bum because it takes a lot of courage and a lot of skill to, to make it at that pro level. So I just want to make that really clear. You know, like some of you guys, if I ever see some of these fighters in person, I, I, I won't kiss the ass. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't disrespect them either. And it's not because I'm afraid of them. Fuck, I, I'll kick them in the kneecap. I hit them with a fucking pipe upside the head. You know, they don't scare me. But it, it's not that. It's just, you know, it's respect. And, and as a man, they, they do something that we can't do. Like I get in the ring and spar. You know what I'm saying? And I know how hard it is. You know, I got headgear on and I know how hard it is to eat a shot and to work past the pain and when you're exhausted to keep pushing through. And what these guys do, even for, you know, for, for casual fans to be like, ah, he's not that good. That that's They do some shit that we couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? No matter how good in shape we get. So, so you know, don't, don't, you know, like, don't come attacking me. Oh, you know, you said this and you said that because I've had relatives of pro boxers come at me like that. You know, as a fan, I'm entitled to say whatever the fuck I want to say and I'm going to say it as a fan. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that as a man um, I feel exactly that, that same way you know people have to learn how to make the distinctions but anyway follow me at Twitter at YDKSAB follow me at Facebook if you're on Facebook at Boxing Freaks uh, let me know what you guys think and um, stay tuned to my next video peace